The highly anticipated Acheron and the new Preservation Unit Aventurine will be the new featured 5 stars. How's it going everyone? This is K. Hopefully Black Swan and Sparkle didn't destroy your wallets cause the 2.1 banners are looking very solid and no doubt will be one of the game's best selling updates. So I'll break down all the new and returning characters, talk about their skills, roles, strengths and weaknesses to help you decide which character you should pull for. Acheron is a Lightning Nihility DPS whose primary focus is to alt spam. She will will use her skill until then, by doing so, she will deal single target damage along with adjacent damage. The point of using her skill is to gain a slash dream point. The attack will also inflict a Crimson Knot stack onto the targeted enemy. Unlike traditional units who relies on energy to use their alts, Akron requires 9 dream points instead. She doesn't use any energy and when obtaining the required amount, her alt can then be used. How you would generate more dream charges comes from her talents. When debuffs are inflicted on enemies, you'll gain 1 point and add 1 Crimson stack onto the target. Now debuffs can come from your own units, even from other sources like enemy self debuffs, LCs, or weakness break. This effect can only be triggered once per debuff ability used. Now if an enemy dies, they will transfer all the Christmas stacks onto the enemy with the most stacks. So it's almost a requirement to use debuffers with Acheron, Silver Wolf and Pella being two of the best for her. When using her ult, the 9 dream points will be consumed and Acheron will initiate two different forms of attacks. The first three hits will be called Rainblade, where you can actually change targets in between slashes. During this attack, she will deal lightning damage to the target and removes up to 3 crimson stacks per slash according to leaked gameplay. When the stacks are removed by this attack, lightning damage will be dealt to all enemies scaling with Acheron's attack. Additionally, for every stack removed, the damage multiplier for it increases up to 60%. Her fourth, which is also the final slash, deals AoE damage to all enemies and will remove all crimson stacks. Her talent also adds more effects. When using her ultimate, Akron can reduce the toughness of the enemies regardless of weakness and will decrease all type resistance during her ultimate. Not only that, her ults can be even stronger thanks to her traces. A4 increases Akron's basic skill and ult damage when you have one or two Nihility characters, having two will give you more bonus. At A6, it'll increase her damage by 30%, stacking up to three times when her Rainblade slashes hits enemies who possesses the Crimson Knot. On top of that, her final slash from her ultimate deals additional damage six times times to a random target, and it counts as alt damage. Basically, you're going to see a lot of colorful numbers. Her A2 will also have Akron start battles with 5 dream points already charged, and inflict 5 crimson stacks onto a random target. Her A2 will also give 1 stack of quadrivalence ascendance for every dream point that exceeds the limit, which was 9 if you remember. The ascendance limit is 3 stacks once her A2 is unlocked, so the ascendance effect comes from her technique and is always active. Basically, any extra dream points for her ultimate carries over after using her attack. It'll also inflict a crimson stack onto a random enemy. So let's say for example you generate 11 dream points in total, she'll use up 9, 2 will carry over leaving only 7 points required for her next ultimate. Because of this effect, it doesn't force you to activate Acheron's ult too early and will allow better timing. Let's say she's maxed out at 9 and you want to throw a defense debuff. With the Ascendance effect, you can now do so knowing Acheron will recharge additional Dream Points after her ultimate. Just remember, 3 Ascendance stack is the limit, so you don't want to throw too many debuff abilities that exceeds that limit, otherwise you're just wasting out on Dream Points. When activating her technique, then going into battle, Acheron will gain 1 Ascendance stack each wave and deals lightning damage to all enemies, which also reduces toughness regardless of weakness type. If enemies get broken, the lightning weakness break effect will occur. Now a cool thing about her technique is that when using it on normal enemies on the open field, she can immediately kill them. This works wonderfully in simulated universe where you still obtain the blessing. I love this because it saves time. So basically, Akron is going to be a DPS monster. She's going to be ranked among the top tier damage dealers. This unit is going to be great for both single target and AoE battles, even more so in waved battles like Pure Fiction. What makes her amazing is her alt spamming. Not needing energy and instead is charged by inflicting debuffs can really stack fast. Now, this can limit your team build as you do need debuffers or units with debuffing LCs or abilities. Again, going back to her A4 of increasing her damage when having two Nihility characters. On top of some team restrictions, Akron will be an SP hungry unit as you'll need to activate her skill every turn. Now, Akron gets a significant boost to her performance if you pull for her signature light comb, even more so by obtaining her E2, which is a good stopping point. At E2, it'll reduce her A4 requirement to just one Nihility character to obtain the max boost in damage, potentially freeing a slot for other team members. 
But what makes it great is that she gains the Dream Points and inflicts a Crimson Stack at the start of her turn, allowing Akron to use her ultimate even faster. Obviously, this isn't feasible for a lot of players, but I mean, at this point, it's to be expected from Hoyoverse. Akron can be effective outside of Lightning Weakness enemies, as her ult can ignore weakness types, and overall, she's a very powerful DPS to have. Aventurian is a solid sustain unit who works even better in FUA teams. His skill generates a fortified wager shield for the team that scales with his defense stats. The shield effect can stack up to 200% when you repeatedly generate more. His talent offers a 50% effect resistance to characters with his shield. He himself can resist CC debuffs once after every two turns. When units with his wager shield gets attacked, Aventurian will gain one blind bet point. If he himself gets hit, he'll gain one additional point, so two instead of one. Now, if the enemy attacks more multiple characters at once, he'll gain 1 point per character hit. Let's say an enemy hits 2 allies, that's 2 blind bets. If the attack hits 2 allies and aventuring, he'll gain 4 points. Once he accrues 7 points, he'll launch a multiple hit follow-up attack, scaling with his defense, with each hit dealing imaginary damage to a random enemy. Max blind bets you can have is 10. Using its ultimate deals damage to a single target and inflicts the unnerved effect, which increases crit damage when units attack the enemy with that debuff. Additionally, he'll gain anywhere between 1 to 7 blind points adding towards his talent. When using his technique, it'll increase the team's defense for 3 turns. Now, there's 3 different percentages you can obtain for the defense buff and it's based on chance, a 24% defense buff, 36% and a 60% defense buff, which is actually the hardest to get. His A6 utilizes FUAs. When allies use follow-up attacks, he'll gain a blind point. This can occur three times until Aventurine takes his turn again, which will reset his A6 effect. When he uses his own FUA, he'll generate a weaker wager shield for the team and will additionally generate another shield to the character with the least amount of shield life. His A4 generates a shield for everyone at the start of battle, saving you a skill point. A2 increases his crit rate by 2% for every 100 of his defense that exceeds 1600. Max is 48% crit rate buff. If you have money to spend, E1 is quite good. It increases everyone's crit damage if they have his shield up. Additionally, his ult can also generate a wager shield, so now you're not just reliant on his FUAs or skill. Aventuring will rely on using his follow-up attacks to keep his shield constantly up. You can use his skill every time, but that will cost SP. Having allies who can use FUAs will help tremendously, but it isn't required. He can function normally as a sustain without follow-up attackers. Again, it just helps. Thankfully, we all receive a free FUA imaginary unit who can synergize amazingly with him. If you also have Topaz, then putting her along with Dr. Ratio and Aventurine will make a strong team. Now, since he provides a shield, having a shielder as opposed to a healer would mean that your characters can survive big attacks as shields prevent damage. This is extremely helpful from getting one-shotted by bosses. Now, obviously, unlike healers, your goal is to prevent damage. If your shields can't keep up from enemy attacks, then you're going to die unlike healers where the goal is to recover from damage. There are some weaknesses when you compare him to other sustains. His damage support is on a single target enemy, while some other sustains can buff the entire teams for AoE situations. His effect resistance isn't as strong as well, as other units can 100% prevent CC debuffs or even dispel them. Aventurine is a reliable sustain who can synergize well with FUA teams. He's good. If you don't have any sustains, he can be a solid choice, but if there are other sustains that you already have, like Fushuen or Hua Hua, then you may not need him as much. Lo Chai is one of the top sustains we currently have. His greatest strength is keeping the entire party at high health. This comes from his talent where once he obtains two flower stats, he'll generate a field that will consistently heal allies when your units attack. The attacking unit gets healed, but when combined with his A4 trace, all other team members will also get healed with a smaller amount of recovery. So basically, the more attacks you do, everyone gets healed. This includes alts, which can be a lifesaver if you have low health during an enemy's turn. His skill heals a targeted ally, scaling with his attack stats. By using his skill, it'll generate one flower stack and remove one debuff on them thanks to his A2. A great thing about his skill is that it can also auto-heal one ally whose HP drops 50% or lower. Lo Chai will automatically use this skill even during enemy's turn, which is vital for emergency situations. His auto-heal can be triggered again after two turns and doesn't consume any skill points. This combined with his ultimate is the reason why Lo Chai is such a SP positive unit. His ultimate can also generate a flower stack, which means you essentially never have to actively use his skill to generate the healing field. Of course, you'll use his skill in dire situations or to remove debuffs, but he can go through battles never using skill points. Going back to his ult, it's an AoE that removes one buff on enemies, which definitely helps a lot since you use his ult often. His A6 increases his LNCC debuff resistance by 70%. Combined with relics, he'll be pretty hard to debuff. So your main goal is to keep his healing field constantly up. 
If you use this technique before battle, it will trigger the fill at the start of battle, saving you some skill points. You'll attack with your units to keep HP high. You can auto heal when someone's HP falls too low, or you can manually heal with a skill if needed. You'll of course use his ultimate to generate flower stacks, and once everything is done, you'll just use Lil Chud's basic attack to generate SPs for the team. He's very easy to use, but his biggest weakness would be survivability from big AoE attacks leading to consecutive enemy attacks. Aside from a single target auto heal and attacking enemies with ultimates, Lil Chud doesn't have an emergency healing that can instantly recover most HP for everyone after an enemy launches a huge AoE. There are at times when a boss does AoE and other enemies will attack afterwards. If his auto heal hasn't refreshed yet or multiple of your units have low HP, then you'll rely on a little luck and pray that enemies won't bully the character with the lowest HP. Overall, Locha is a skill points machine who keeps his team's HP high. He's great in removing debuffs and can chip away at enemy buffs. So far, the top three sustains are Fushuen, Hua Hua, and Lo Cha, though comparing him to the other two, he falls a little short. Fushuen offers better survivability and Hua Hua offers better support. But each units have their own pros and cons. Lo Cha is a great sustain to have, but he isn't a must pull. Jing Liu is an S tier DPS and has stayed among the top ranks ever since her release. You'll use her skill to generate a Syzygy stack. The purpose for this is to acquire two stacks, which will then put her into an enhanced state. In this enhanced mode, you can't use her basic. Upon transforming, she will move again and her crit rate will increase up to 50% at level 10, which is just amazing. Her skill will change from single target into a single target with adjacent damage, making her quite useful for AoE battles. Her skill multipliers will also increase, but she will no longer generate stacks for her talent and she will no longer generate skill points. While in this enhanced state, whenever she attacks with her skill or ult, Jing Liu will consume a very small amount of HP from other allies. By doing so, her attack increases significantly resulting in more damage. Using her skill will also no longer use skill points. Her ultimate deals single target and adjacent damage while also generating one stack for her talents. Now, usually you want to save her ult until she goes into her enhanced state. This is so you can retain her enhancements longer and deal more damage. Her talent allows a max of three stacks at E0. Upon entering her enhancement, you'll only have two turns, but using her ult will give you an extra turn. Not only that, her ult's damage will be significantly more thanks to the talent's HP consuming effect and her A6 effect which increases the ult's damage by 20% if she's enhanced. So usually, not all the time, but usually, you'll use her skill and not her ult to generate the stacks to transform. Her A4 can help advance forward her turn by 10% when using her regular skill. Basically, use her skill to transform then use her ult to maintain the state. But not all the time, as mentioned, if there's a turn limit and you can get in an extra attack before the cycle ends or something and she has zero stacks, then use your skill, then alt, transform, then enhance skill attack for a quick 3 attack combo. While enhanced, Jing Liu's A2 increases her effect resistance by 35%, a nice added bonus. So she's powerful and a must have for DPS lovers. Having Ice Weakness Break can also delay enemies turn with Freeze, which is great for survivability. Going into battle after using her technique gives her 1 stack and 15 energy for her ult. There's a 100% base chance to freeze all enemies, which delays their turn and deals damage. Again, Jing Liu is a DPS most players should pull for. Having a 50% crit rate buff will also allow tremendous stat flexibility, where you can concentrate a lot of substats onto crit damage and speed. So the 2.1 banners are honestly insane. You have two strong DPSs and two solid sustains. This will depend on whether you want to play it safe and pull for existing top tier units or take a chance on the new characters who has huge potential of being top tier as well. Obviously, I'd advise waiting for Akron to be playtested post-release. So, who should you pull for on 2.1 banners? On the safe side, go with Jing Lu. She's one of the best DPSs in the game and is currently the best ice DPS in the game. She's flexible in many teams, working with both buffers and debuffers. She can deal a lot of damage, of course, and is easier to build compared to other damage dealers. She will chip away at your team's HP, but it's a very small amount. With a sustain, you'll be fine. She also does not consume a lot of SP. Technically, she is an SP negative unit, but her enhanced skill no longer consumes SPs, which is helpful. Jing Liu is powerful, go get her. So Akron is also very powerful, and there's nothing wrong with choosing her above Jing Liu. She can be used in many battles, since her ults can shred toughness regardless of the elements, 
Agron's damage will be insane, and depending on the current teams, LCs, and even future supports, she can possibly out-damage Jinglu. There are some drawbacks, however. Currently, Agron will require debuffers, limiting some team flexibility, and in sense, has limited support. Her free-to-play light cone is also limited compared to Jinglu. On top of that, she will require better relic stats, since you'll need to farm for both crit values. As a lightning DPS, we already have Kafka, who is an S-tier unit, and we also have Jing Yuin, who is also strong. All this is not to say Akron is bad or worse than Jing Lu. It's just that for what we currently have, Jing Lu has more positives going for her. If you don't want Jing Lu, then Akron should be your priority. Now that's if you want a DPS. For sustains, it's apples and oranges between Aventurine and Lo Cha. Shielder versus healers. Shields prevents damage so you're safe from big attacks and healers keep HP high, which doesn't create any pressure of constantly needing to put up a shield. If your shields can't keep up with enemy attacks, then you're at risk of losing. For Aventurine, he has a consistent way to keep his shield up. There will be instances where enemies will bully a character and your unit will lose health, but generally, Aventurine will keep your team safe. So this really depends on what they offer outside of survivability. Aventurine works well in FUA teams, and if that's a team you like using, then he takes priority over Lo Cha. He can also increase crit damage for the team on a single enemy. Lo Cha, however, is an SP machine. Don't get me wrong, both are SP positive units, but depending on how fast Aventurine's shields gets depleted, you may have to reapply his skill if his FUAs aren't fast enough. For Lo Cha, you'll rarely have to use his skill unless someone is near death and his auto heal hasn't refreshed yet. Lo Cha also has more utility with a debuff and enemy buff removal. So I would recommend Aventurine just a little bit more as shielders are generally more helpful for short battles like MOC where damage prevention is safer than healing. You typically won't have to worry about big attacks and as there is a cycle limit, the goal is to speed run. He also fits into FUA teams which will no doubt get future units. Healers will be great for longer battles like Pure Fiction I'm not saying you can't use Lo Cha for MOC or anything, but you won't have to worry about upkeeping a shield for longer battles and just concentrate on healing. While in MOC, big attacks can one-shot your teammates. So basically, all these units are amazing. Go for Jing Lu as she's a safer option, and that's the key word, safer, because we have gameplay data, she's amazing throughout multiple updates, and has less restrictions in terms of builds. Akron for insane damage potential, then Aventuring for a good shielder and FUA support, and Lo Cha is great for SP generation and a phenomenal healer. But comment down below to let me know which character you're pulling for on the 2.1 update. Good luck on your polls everyone. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for future Star Rail videos. Take care.